The iOS 7.1 update is live and it's available for you to download on your iOS device and install. This is Danny and we're going to take a look at all the significant changes in iOS 7.1. Let's kick this video off with CarPlay support. And Apple announced that they were gonna get into the car interface game and they are working with some manufacturers to have CarPlay support. And what this allows you to do is to plug in your iPhone and if your new car supports it, it's gonna be able to carry over that iOS experience to your driving experience. You're going to be able to use Siri to make phone calls, messages, you're going to be able to listen to music, amongst other things, and also use the Apple Maps. So right now, the CarPlay lineup is pretty small, so I'm not going to be able to show you this, but I cannot wait until I can actually see this and bring you a video on it. One of the largest gripes about iOS 7 was the way that the Touch ID performed on it. Now, I didn't have many problems, but I say it worked about 70 to 80% of the time. So this update is supposed to alleviate that problem with the Touch ID not working correctly. In my experience with 7.1, I really felt like this improved the Touch ID experience. Look at how fast it is. It just works almost every single time. I could not get it to hiccup during this video. But a lot of people said that it actually messed up their functionality even worse. Some people have had their fingerprint erased and it just doesn't recognize it at all without them actually redoing it all over again. And even then, it still didn't work. So let me know your experience with the 7.1 update. The next thing we're gonna talk about are some UI changes that I've seen on 7.1. And it doesn't look that much different. Everything is very subtle, but you're gonna notice a few of these differences. I felt like that the animations were a little bit quicker. It makes it for a smoother experience. You can see the one without the 7.1 update on the right hand side. And I felt like the animations were a little bit quicker. I noticed when you restart or try to turn your phone off, you can see the slide to power off button is different and so is the cancel button and you can see what it used to look like before the 7.1 update. I didn't notice any differences in the animation of the quick toggle menu, but I definitely noticed the differences in the screen. That's one of the first things I noticed when I updated. It definitely looked darker in contrast and the colors have changed. I think the UI actually looks a little bit flatter. If you take a look at something like the greens up there on the messages and the phone icon, they definitely dialed down the contrast a little bit. So if you weren't a fan of that huge bright UI, you may like this, but some people were a fan of that. It just made the screen look bright. So I'm not quite sure if you're gonna like it or not, but there's definitely a difference there. You can definitely see it. I think it's a preference thing, but I definitely like the way it looks better on 7.1. These are changes I noticed before I even went to the accessibility section in the settings. Now when you go there, you can see there is an increased contrast tab. You hit that and it'll take you to a couple of other things. Reduce transparency, if you turn that on, I'll show you what it looks like in just a second, to darken colors, and you can also reduce the white point if you think that your screen looks a little too bright. So I personally like the reduced white point. It looks pretty good. So let me know what you guys think on your device. Here is what the reduced transparency looks like. If you look at the bottom of the dock and on the background of the folders, it turns it gray with some black lettering. So it makes it a little bit easier to read. Same thing with the quick toggles menu. Here's what it looks like in comparison before the update. So I'm not sure, it's a definitely a preference thing, but it does make the text a little bit easier to read and it's a little bit different look if you wanna go that way. Here are a few other minor tweaks that I've seen is when you accept phone calls now, you can see that the icons are circular instead of the square on the previous version. And also your call button has also turned circular. If you look at the keyboard close enough, it has changed a tiny bit. And if you put them side by side, they don't look that different. The iOS 7.1 has a little bit more contrast for sure and more of a gray look. But the one thing I didn't like is this caps button because you can't really tell when it's on or off. I know it's just a minor gripe, but I found myself messing up a few times on this. But I mean, you'll get used to it and it should be absolutely no problem. The accessibility menu has one more thing I noticed, which is the button shapes. If you look at where it says general, when you turn it on, it turns it into a button instead of that little arrow. Not a huge fan of that. But the camera gets one extra feature here and this is only exclusive to the 5S where it gets HDR auto. Basically what this does is if the iPhone thinks that picture is gonna be better with HDR, it will take it. But you can turn this feature off if you don't like it. But the actual performance itself seems exactly the same. The shutter is just as fast. And there is an example of the HDR auto in action where it takes the HDR shot and the original shot. 
The calendar app gets a very minor tweak. I'm not a huge fan of this calendar app, so I don't use it that much. But on the top right corner, you actually get a list view now. So when you're looking at your month, you can finally see events. I know that's something so small, but it was a huge gripe with iOS users. In addition, iTunes Radio also gets a little bit of a tweak. Now Apple can make more money off of you by putting a convenient buy song button on the top right corner. Siri also gets some minor enhancements as well. The old way that Siri used to be activated is obviously just holding that home button and then allowing Siri to hear what you're saying. And then eventually when it doesn't hear anything else, then it starts calculating and starts going. The additional way you can do it now is you can hold the home button to activate it and then you can speak a command and then release the home button and then it starts calculating right away right after the release of the home button. Here's an example. How are you Siri? I'm pretty good Danny. Siri also gets some more natural sounding voices in foreign languages so that's a good addition as well to 7.1. The last thing I noticed is how easy it is now to turn off the parallax or moving background if you don't like it. When you're choosing a new wallpaper now, you just choose the wallpaper and you'll see right there perspective zoom on or off. So when you turn it off from here, you will not get that moving background that some people do not like on iOS. It's a lot easier than jumping into your settings, going into accessibility, and then turning off reduce motion. But the one thing is, if you do turn reduce motion off in the settings, when you go into the wallpapers, you will not see that setting. I'm sure there are some other things that I might have missed on here, so if I did, let me know in the comments below. But for the most part, iOS 7.1 is exactly what iOS 7 should have been from the very beginning. It fixes a lot of the bugs, and from what I know, it does fix that crazy random reboot thing that's happening. It actually happened to my wife's phone a lot, but didn't happen to me on my gold 5S. So let me know what you guys think about the update. I think it made the phone a lot snappier. It actually made it a lot smoother, and I am enjoying just these little minor UI tweaks until iOS 8 comes out. All right, guys, that does it for me showing you what's new on the iOS 7.1 update. Make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more videos like this one. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed this content. And follow me on Twitter at SuperScientific if you have any questions. And I will see you guys in the next one.